card number 20 is a 2013-2014 Panini Innovation Statline Prime Patch of LeBron James, numbered 17 out of 25. And I've seen a couple times recently where people have asked, hey, you know, does Panini have a set where they say exactly where a relic came from? And, and some of that is a result of the recent rookie relics that are unworn. And the answer to that question is yes. They've had multiple sets like that over the years. Um, one of them coming from the Panini Innovation product that was only out for a couple of years. But um, the idea behind Innovation was that they were going to try things that were a little bit different. So there were a lot of die cuts. There was a stained glass. And yeah, I know we had stained glass cards in gallery, uh, Tops Gallery prior to that. But they were things that seemed different at the time. And it was from a time where Panini really had to court collectors, for lack of a better phrase, because they had established the license. They were trying to get their footing. So they were trying out some things. Um, trying out some really cool things in my opinion and I guess I kind of took it for granted at the time and now I've gone back and have, have tried to get a lot of those cards myself so this specific card here comes from a January 17 2013 game where the Heat beat the Lakers 99 to 90 and all of this stuff is on here so I'm really just reading to you but uh, check out that stat line there LeBron scored 39 points he had eight assists and seven rebounds and then on top of that Every time one of these copies of the 25 copies has shown up, I've tried to save a picture on my computer. So I just looked at it today. I currently have 12 out of 25 pictures, and three of those 12 are patch pieces like this. So they're nicer pieces. And the other nine that I've found are just kind of pieces here from the uh, side part of the jersey, which they can create a lot of cheap patches off of that. They're not really nice patches, but they are still considered prime, so... You know, if we're using that math, then I'm guessing there's only about probably six or seven that have this style of patch here. Uh, but I, I can't prove that definitively. Either way, I'm very happy with the quality of this patch here. Very happy with this card. And looking back, I kind of laugh at how I acquired this card because it was on Facebook. And I think the seller was asking, you know, a certain amount for it. And I was trying to get it for like $5 cheaper. And we went back and forth a couple of times. And eventually I had to cave to his price, which was $65 shipped. Now, when you think of it today, that, that's pretty funny, but at the time, that was paying kind of strong for a LeBron patch. So anyway, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I have it, and that's why this is card number 20. Card number 19 is from the exact same set as card number 20. This is a 2013-2014 Panini Innovation Statline Prime patch of Steph Curry. And this one is numbered 13 of 25. And I've talked all about this set in the previous video, so you know you can go back and look at that if you haven't already. But the main thing I like about this set is that these patches are actually game dated. So not only does this feature an amazing patch here, which you can see exactly which part it is. It's from that bridge logo in the middle of the jersey, kind of where those beams are going straight up there. Um, so it's a nice patch. It's a picture of him from that exact game. It's got the game uh, listed here, kind of their version of the box score, where it's got Curry's points, where he scored 30. He dished out seven assists, and then he had six rebounds. So um, this card was actually gifted to me by a friend in the hobby, The Lucky Show. So thank you very much once again, G. Um, he had this card in a, a PSA 9, and I talked to him a little bit about the LeBron and how I like this set and how he's thinking about slowly pursuing it. I mean, I'm still working on it. Here we are several years later, and uh, this card showed up in my mailbox at one point. So very, very generous. Thank you so much. Um, as you can see here, I, I definitely value it. It is card number 19 on my countdown. Number 18 is this 2020-2021 Contenders Optic Hollow 1983 Tribute Autograph of Bill Russell. And I've owned a handful of Russell autographs over the last couple of years. And my strategy has always been to start on the low end side and work my way up to one that I really like. Uh, that was the strategy at least, but that's hard for me to do because I get attached to stuff. So I really only moved one of those. I still have about a handful. Um, the one I moved was even part of a deal for a card that will be revealed in my top 10. So I don't get rid of them easily, but um, this is kind of the end point for me though. I can't see myself upgrading from here. I wanted a nice licensed on-card example with blue ink. I like this one in particular because it's got a great action shot against Wilt Chamberlain. You can see him there. And Bill signed it all on one line. He didn't stack the autograph like he's had to do on other designs. And I'm not a huge baseball guy, but I should also point out that this card mimics 
the 1983 Donruss baseball design, even though you know it doesn't have that up here, which is where it would normally be on the baseball card. Um, and that's why it's labeled a 1983 tribute. In baseball, I think this bottom corner was, this yellow part was actually a bat, uh, which they covered up the end of the bat there and just made it just a yellow line. And then in baseball, they had a mitt there instead of a basketball. Uh, they modified that a little bit here. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to use a 1983 design for a player who didn't play then, but he's not the only player in the set. And I've seen some more modern guys in there too. You know, truth be told, Panini has a very limited basketball history, including the sticker side. So they've really had to lean into these old baseball brands and old baseball designs like Donruss and Pacific. Um, we finally got to a point where they have over a dozen years and now it looks like they're going to lose that license as a whole. Even if you ignore the fact that this is an old baseball design, adding the hollow effect, which obviously we didn't have in 1983, um, that makes for an amazing card here. It looks great with the signature on it, and I'm fortunate that this showed up on ComC and I was able to save up. Once again, this is card number 18. Number 17 is this 2016-2017 Panini Eternal patch of LeBron James numbered to 50. And what's so important about this patch is that it is a piece of jersey that LeBron wore in the 2016 NBA Finals. And even though he had won titles before that, this is the one that he brought back to Cleveland. So that was a pretty big deal, not only for LeBron, but also for uh, the people in that area. And for those of you that are not familiar with Panini Eternal, it's basically a new version or a newer version of Panini Instant where you could order cards uh, they didn't come out of packs, you ordered them, and it focused more on memorabilia. So they were trying to take key moments or key events and, and capture memorabilia that would help you to commemorate that. And LeBron has a number of different relics from the set um, with all different serial print runs. Now, I know some other LeBron collectors have theorized a lot about the lower number patches. Um, they, they think that some of them didn't get made, and that seems crazy now, but these were pretty pricey out the gate especially for that time frame. You know, I'd wish I could get some more info on this. I don't know who would have that information other than someone at Panini. But um, either way, I'm happy to own this one. It commemorates a big part of LeBron's career and then also a pretty big moment in NBA history. And that's one of the things I love to do with my collection is to narrate the story of NBA history. So that is card number 17. Number 16 on the list is this signed 1972-73 Topps Pete Maravich base card. And I've talked about it on this list already, but I spent nine years collecting a 1972-73 top set, except I wanted every card signed. So um, the Maravich, even though there are a lot more Maraviches out there than some of the other guys like John Brisker, I knew when I acquired this one that it meant I was serious about the set and that was kind of the sign that there was no turning back. So I was able to make a deal for this uh, with a user on blowout at the time. We exchanged some phone calls and uh, were able to agree to a price. But um, there are several things that I really like about this card. Uh, number one, great great pose there, even though it is just a kind of a posed photo shoot. It's not a game photo. But the thing that I really like here is the way that he signed it because a lot of the Maravich autographs I've seen are either like kind of scratchy sharpie signatures or it's just simply Pistol Pete. But this one in fact it has Pistol Pete and it also has Maravich the last name so um, a lot uh, more complete of an autograph than I've seen on other items. Um, yes there is some wear to the card you can see it in there but I'm not going to get too picky when it comes to a Maravich auto. And um, not only is this a centerpiece of my 72 Tops collection, but it's also one of the bigger cards and one of my favorite cards in my PC as a whole. So that is number 16. 